G'day. In today's video, I'm opening up an Acer Aspire 3 A3-1523, also known as an N18Q13. And what I'm hoping to do here is A, find out what can be replaced and repaired, and B, upgrade some RAM, hopefully, and install an NVMe SSD if it does support that. If not, I'll be putting in a 2.5 inch drive. But let's open it up and see what we can CCC. So far, I'll let you know if any of these Phillips head screws are different to one another. But right now, they are all looking the same. When we first open it up, we will disconnect the battery. And from there, we should be safe to pretty much modify what we need. So far, all screws are identical. I like it when companies do that. Now I should be able to grab the bottom cover just in here and hopefully pull. No, nah, doesn't want to pop. Just use a little metal pry tool here to get it started. Now I'll grab a plastic pry tool and continue. Now this plastic is very delicate so it does have the potential of tearing which is quite crappy but is the case. There we go. Now that we're in here I can see what we can see CC. I see I see the Ryzen 2200 or 3250 G I think this particular one is looking relatively dust free which is very nice. We do have a replacement battery, or you can potentially replace the battery. If I zoom in, this is the model number. AP18C8K, it is rated at 11.25 volt. There is a couple of different batteries you can get out there, and the voltage is, is slightly different. We can see the wireless card here, which is an Intel 3168NGW. If I get you guys on there, sorry. And we have a single RAM slot here, so I'm assuming it's got 4 gig of RAM soldered onto the other side, as this was advertised with 4 gig. Being we're not seeing any RAM, I'm going to assume we only have a single slot to upgrade. Sorry, out of frame there. Not on my A game today. But I want to disconnect the battery to begin with, so I should be able to take off this tape over here. Uh, be careful here, I'm using a metal. Using a metal Phillips head screwdriver to get that. With that pulled back, what I want to do now is grab on the side and pull back, like that. Pull back. We have one disconnected battery. If you do want to replace that, it doesn't actually look like there's any screws holding it in. Just take it out, slot the new one in, put it in, and go. While we're in here, I want to upgrade the RAM that's here. Going to add, I'll add, I'll add four, Samsung 4 gig of DDR4 3200 megahertz. There we go, sorry about that. My camera is not wanting to focus very well. Installing this should be pretty straightforward. We've got to make this notch here match up with this notch down here. So don't make sure, yeah, we'll only go one way. So keep an eye on the notch. We do want to put it in on about a 45 degree angle and pull down and that should lock it into position, just like so. So we should be able to push it into here like that and then push down, should click into position like that. If you've already got RAM in there and you want to take it out, we should be able to push out both sides. It should lift up and you should be able to grab it out from there. So in, down, in, down, locked in. Now I want to replace the WD SSD that's in here with another one. Got a perfectly good donor one to go in here. So if I undo this screw here, that should lift up. Just a simple Phillips head screw. And we should be able to walk this back and we're out. Looking at what we got here, we have a Western Digital SN520 NVMe 128 gig. So a fairly small NVMe there and I'll be replacing it 
with this particular one here all going well. I'm not actually sure which brand this is from, but I pulled it out of, out of a faulty Lenovo. And to install that, it's going to be very similar to the RAM over here. What we should be able to do is put it in on an angle, not as, not as aggressive as the RAM, and push in this way, and then down, and then we put the screw in. So if we go like that, to here, screw in, get a bit of fluff that's off there, rotate us back around, and while I'm here, I might as well replace the thermal paste. I find Ryzen's tend to run a little bit warm, but that's okay. Even simply undoing that screw, he's got it lifting up. There we go. And this should be able to pop it out. As I said, relatively dust free, looking pretty good. Thermal paste could do with a refresher though. Now, I should just be able to use some tissue paper. I'm going to use a little bit of isopropyl. You could use some Windex. Most potentially even water, as long as you make sure it's dry afterwards. But isopropyl works very well for me. Get a wipe down. Hmm. Relatively fresh. It's actually coming off very easily. No, normally I expect, to be, expect that to be fairly bone dry. It's looking alright. I'm not sure what these stains are here, but I'm going to just leave them. And that thermal paste is wiping off. So I'd say this has actually received some fresh paste recently in its lifetime, which is good to find out. So this probably wasn't overly warranted. I'd say it wasn't warranted at all, but you don't know unless you open it up. If you've had your machine now for a few years, you're probably going to have to, it would be beneficial to replace the thermal paste. More so to give the, dust, the cooler a dust blowout if you haven't already done so. There we go. I'm reasonably happy with that. So now I should just be able to put some thermal paste on there. What have we got floating around? Some uh, Master Gel Pro by Cool Master. You will do. Yeah, make sure none's floating around. Just gonna dab that on. There we go. A bit more over here. There we go. That should be sufficient. Next up, put the cooler back on, reconnect the battery. I mean, it should be right. You could potentially put more RAM in here if you like. You could put an 8 gig stick to go with the 4, or you could put a 32 in there. Wouldn't really recommend it, being you're probably not really going to utilize it. 8 gig or 16 is probably where I'll draw the limit. Um, 16 plus 4 gives you 20 gig of RAM. This is going to run in 4x4, so it's going to run in dual channel mode. And a reinstall, so it's going to be a Ryzen 3 with 8 gig of RAM and a 512 gig NVMe SSD which isn't going to be a too bad combo if all you want to do is web browsing, maybe the odd, odd very light game. But overall, pretty happy with it. Another thing to note, if you do damage your charging port, the board will need to come out and be resoldered, as the port itself is part here. Looks like we've got a fuse over here as well, which is nice to have. Um, I may be incorrect with that one, but that's where I believe that one is. And from here, I'm going to reconnect the battery. Should be a matter of sliding this in. I zoom you guys back in again. Should be a matter of putting it over the top and pushing it forward. Like so. Put the tape over the top. Tape it down. This one's going a bit wild. Put that over there. One battery reconnected. And now it's just a matter of putting the back bottom cover back on. Funnily enough, looks like it once had an optional spot for a hard drive. Looking at that, if I compare it over here, this big wide space over here. Actually, I can see down here underneath the M.2 or the PCI Wi-Fi card, there is another connector, which assumably would be for a hard drive to go across here, probably bolt under here, and the hard drive will push down. 
something neat to note. Wouldn't recommend using it unless you require more storage, as NVMe storage nowadays is getting nice and cheap. There we go, with all those, with the bottom halves all pushed in, should be right to proceed and put the screws in. Actually, one thing I will want to check, while it's open, it's always worthwhile checking the tightness of the hinges, as their mounting points do go loose. You just go and check here, 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 and here. You should be right from there. Go, and just proceed to put your screws back in from there. And you should have hopefully been able to upgrade your Acer Aspire 3, A315-23. Hope this helps, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.